and welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. How you doing? How's everyone? How's your mom? How's your dad? How's your cat? How's your dog? I don't know why I went off on that tangent, but here we are. Today we have a special guest. I have a lovely, I was going to say female. You're not supposed to say female anymore. I don't even know We're that. You're supposed to say woman. You're not supposed to say female because it's, um, it's like you call animals female, apparently. Okay. This is what I'm hearing. So we have um, a le lady, a lovely lady on the show today. And she mm -hmm. goes by the name of La Vida Loca. Hello. <laughs> she said I can call her Lavi now, but I've introduced her as La Vida Loca. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd, I know what loca means. Loca means crazy. Yeah. Um, and what's the other bit? What is that? Where would that come from? Well, La Vida Loca means like living the crazy life. Okay. But my name is Lav. And uh, like, people, like La Vera. But people oh, call okay. me Lav. And then, I don't know. Someone called me La Vida Loca one day as a, like a, like a pun intended of like La Vida Crazy, like La Vida Loca. And uh, then, okay. But then I thought I also lived crazy life. So when I was trying to think of a rap name, it just, that How, how old are you? 22. I'm nearly 10 years older than you. Oh, really? Do you know how mad that you is? You look good. I didn't know you. I didn't. Thank I, you. I didn't I'm trying. You're, you're looking very nice yourself. Thank you. I was saying you're like, I don't, I don't. I've had a female, I've had, oh, actually, no, I don't care, I've had female rappers on here before, um, and they've, they've not come so blinged out, you're, you've come, you're giving me like little <laughs> Kim vibes. Thank you. And you've got the chain with the bling no, that's on. that's a compliment, because we love Kim. And you've got the shades on and everything. No, I always have, I always keep my shades, because I don't like people looking in my eyes. Like, really? Like, the eyes are very telling, yeah. Oh my God, listen. That's I how it. I read people, so if I'm like, you know, if I'm out, then put the shades on. But then they can't read you. Yeah, that's what that's that's, that's the, 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 the But I'm speak. having a genuine conversation with you, so obviously. We'll yeah, so we're just gonna, we're gonna have yeah. a good conversation. <laughs> we're gonna just get into it. I've recently seen you on the blogs quite a lot. Recently, oh. recently you've been on the blogs a lot. I saw the one about um, the male rappers sliding into your DMs <laughs> and then basically, obviously trying to ting and whatnot. And you was basically oh, saying, no. listen, you wasn't trying to ting before. So like, I'm, I'm here to do music, that's it, yeah. leave me alone. Then I saw that you got a little bit of backlash from that. What was that about? Because then I saw you put out another tweet basically saying yeah. everyone, like American rappers can say that, mm -hmm. but I've said it and now it's, I'm clout chasing. Yeah, no, because um, obviously that was, po only my tweet was posted, which was um, like your favorite rapper jumped in my DMs, blah, 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 blah. So mm. people have only seen what I've tweeted. And obviously from tweets, people can perceive it however they want to perceive it. But um, a lot of people took that in a way where, as if I was saying, like, oh, like trying to show off that I had rap. I saw, I saw a lot of dense comments of, yeah, I'm trying to show off that I've got rappers in my comments, so I, I just like want people word, to dense. know. I'm going to use that now. Yeah, I use that dense a lot. No, that's what I call people. Like, You're so <laughs> dense. Like, <laughs> I'm going to start no. using that. <laughs> but dense yeah, comments. no, like, I, that I was trying to show that I had male rappers in my DMs, but I just thought, are you stupid or something? Because you completely missed what I was trying to say, which yeah. was, I'm trying to keep a level of professionalism. You lot didn't know me. You lot, you don't know me outside of music. Mm. I only meet you in these events. I mm. meet you at like shoots and all of these things. That's how you know me. You know me as La Vida Loca. You don't know. You don't even know my government name past that. Mm. So respect that. It's like doctors. Doctors don't go to their workplace and then start fucking the other doctor and the nurse. And people want to keep. Maybe they do. You know? Maybe they do. But do you know what? In the real quite, world, <laughs> how they get quite freaky, you know. In the real world, we like to imagine everybody keeps that level of. You know something so i should be able to keep that as well just in in music so do you um do you feel though that male rappers do try to take advantage not adv I, don't, I don't like using the word advantage because it mm -hmm. seems like quite intense but um you know they just think that just because you are a woman that you automatically are going to fancy them because they've got a bit yeah. of st um, status, you I know? I think, yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of male rappers have an ego. I mm -hmm. think they, yeah, they're very egotistical beings. They feel like they can, yeah, literally that. They can have every, any woman that they want. And then that does obviously like project into the industry as well, where they feel like they can get female rappers, musicians, singers, managers, whatever. And that does go on in the industry. And that is some people, some people are down for that. But for what I want for my career and where I'm trying to go and what I want to build for myself, that, de that, doesn't, that doesn't involve fondling with, you know, the colleagues. Right, <laughs> colleagues. Yeah. Um, so we've met before, we done mm -hmm. something for Channel U where we did like a all ladies takeover. Yeah. And um, we had a good conversation. And that was kind of the first time that I had come across to you. And I just yeah. remember thinking, 
you articulated yourself very well. You, the, some of the points that we was talking about, like mm -hmm. colorism and yeah. just like the image that women have to uphold within the industry. I felt like you, con you contributed some really good points. Um, tell me about your look, because I remember when we was talking, you was kind of saying that before you was, if I remember, you was quite tomboyish. Was, did you say that? Um, no, I've always been quite girly, but right. I just, there was a point where like, I don't know, you just, I don't, I wasn't quite as... Feminine. Like, yeah, tracksuits a lot. And, okay, right, yeah. yeah. Like, I've always loved nails and, like, eyelashes and yeah. hair and stuff like that, but it was, like, I didn't care so much in, like, in my appearance as I do now, in a sense. So I've definitely become more, I don't know, more do you groomed. Feel, do you feel like um, that was a natural thing, or do you feel it was pressure from the industry but to look mm -hmm. like what people think uh, female rappers should look like? No, I feel like it's just my own growth. Okay. I feel like I've grown a lot in a short amount of time mm. and I feel like now I definitely feel in myself I feel like I look how I want to look I, I have like I can dress how I want to dress I'm definitely the person you know like when I was the young girl thinking of the woman that I wanted to be or the young adult I wanted to be I'm definitely growing into that person right, right, right. and I'm, I'm happy like I'm happy with my growth definitely so you look so glamorous now. <laughs> I would never think that somebody so glamorous mm. has had has been to jail. So you've been to you you was in jail for how That's long? The point. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You've, it's like a whole. It's like a butterfly. Um, so how long was you in jail for? Um, about four years. Four years. Yeah. How did this happen? Because mm. an appearance, mm -hmm. which we're going to go and talk about in a bit, is yeah. you're quite petite. Yeah. You're you look sweet. Like <laughs> so, when, when you said that on the um, the channel you thing that we did, I was like, huh? did she just did I hear right? Did she just say that she's she's been to jail? She's had a tough life before. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Because you again, you came to that looking all like, oh, like yeah. you know, all well put together. <laughs> my white thigh -high. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was just like, huh? Mm -hmm. How? Like what? What happened there? So mm -hmm. what? How did? How did you end up there? Um, I think the thing about me is I've always been this person. I've always been this girly. Like, I've always been me, quite bubbly, quite friendly. Quite how I come across to you now. Yeah. But I'm a very emotional person. Right. And I don't... I've never, tried, like, I've never tried to do the bad thing, the bad girl thing, what's good fam, and trying to come around with a presence. I don't feel like you have anything to prove if you're, if you're on what you're on. Yeah. So that's, that's the one. I've never carried myself like that, yeah. what people assume somebody who's gone to jail or a female that's gone to jail should act like. Yeah. But um, I'm very emotional, so I haven't always been able to control it. Now I feel like I'm in... I'm growing, like I said, I'm growing through, like, I'm growing through growth, but mm -hmm. I didn't always used to be able to control my emotions. I'm like, when I'm sad, you can tell I'm sad, like, I'll cry and scream. Yeah. When I'm happy, I'm happy, you can see I'm, like, I'm bouncing all over the place. Mm. When I'm angry, you know I'm angry. I want to I wanna, I wanna kill somebody, like, so right. it goes from zero, like, my, I'm very emotional. But I'm, like, like I said, I've, I've been out now for, like, two years, and for me not to have been recalled in this time, also, I've, I'm on, quite, on quite a heavy license. For me to have got this far now, I'm nearly coming off. I feel like I've done so well and that I feel like that even reflects my growth that shows how much I've grown as a person because mm. the girl that went to jail before like beforehand I wouldn't I, I wouldn't have lasted this long like right. I was too scatty I was too impulsive that was that's what it was but no I've just learned to consequences now and do you know what I mean I think about the consequences I thought about the consequences before but now I've got things to lose right okay if that makes sense but that's again that comes with growth so what did you go to jail for um, arson, um, a firearm charge, which I got um, not guilty for. And right. then while I was in jail for them, for them, that situation, I ended up catching a GBH with intent for wow. um, assaulting somebody in jail. But I'm still on license for that now, so I can't really, can't really speak on that. So that, that, that you are literally the um, phrase, don't judge a book by its cover, because what you just told me, I would never have thought that. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to see that, like you said, you don't carry yourself now mm. as, um, I was gonna say, oh, this is probably gonna get me in trouble, because we had Gas Up Lighties on, and yeah. they are very like, yeah, we've been, we've been through the mud, and they have that aura of like, we've been through the mud type of thing. Yeah. Um, and you don't give off that aura, you, like mm. I'm saying, you give off like, like you have probably your, like your transitioning and that you've changed, so that's mm. really, really nice to see. Mm. Do you, um, do you feel like that adds something to you, as in your past? Because mm. I feel like there's a lot of people, like in the music industry, they talk about all this bad stuff that they've done or mm -hmm. supposedly done. Some of them probably haven't even done it. Yeah. But you've actually um, lived, you've actually been to jail. You've lived that life, kind mm. of. Do you feel that gives you an edge, or do you kind of just um, like not like to talk about it? I don't really see it as an edge. 
I see it as like my life, mm -hmm. and I think like I feel like I talk or I'm I'm still indulged in the whole jail scenario too much. I even think to myself, oh, you think about it way too much. But then on the other hand, I I spent longer there than what I've even been out so far, and I've turned 18 there. I become a woman there. Like wow. I learned so many things about myself there, about mm. people there. Like I really went through a transition mm. in prison. Like mm -hmm. that was where I found music. That's where I decided, okay, cool. That's what I want to do coming out. That's where. I really found like do you know like when you go for like a revolution yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, like yeah. I can't explain it, it sounds weird, but that's what really that was a really big point in my life. So mm. I wouldn't say it gives me edge, but it's just it's just generally something that I've been through and I hope that as my life is changing, then I continue to forget about it even more. Like it's mad when I first come out for the first three months I wanted to go back because I I couldn't see what was here out here for me. Like I was really? generally gonna get myself deliberately sent back to jail because I just felt like I can't do this. Like, and then what happened? Was it family, friends, yeah, or just yeah, yeah. generally like you don't want to go back there? Like mm, I used, mm. obviously I was very vocal about it and yeah. just saying like there is this shit, man. Like everybody's doing this, everyone's pregnant, everyone's got everyone's married. You work here, you do this. No one's got time. Like, I just felt very lost. Like yeah, I didn't yeah, have yeah. a place out here for me. So I was gonna get myself sent back, and I was in quite a vulnerable like position anyway because I was in a bell hostel, so I was under like very very strict like restrictions. So I just it was easy at that point to just mm -hmm. be late or miss your curfew and then be sent back to prison. And that was the thoughts that were in my head every single day. But no, I obviously overcome that, and we're here now. So then it's a uh, mind frame. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, and I I proper admire you for even admitting that because I mm. think that a lot of people I think. Um, bouncer said it he's as well like he okay. basically matured in prison so mm -hmm. when you come out it's hard yeah and people don't talk to people about it they yeah. just put on this bravado mm -hmm. and like they're okay but really inside they're like what the fuck is going on here yeah. um so then how did you get into music then was it straight um, kind of it was it... an accident not an accident but right. i don't know like um so i was i had i've been out for a couple of months now i was just rapping on snapchat right i just like literally at home i done a freestyle and then um, someone screen recorded it and put it on Twitter and then tagged me. So then told me to put it on my own Twitter. So then I uploaded it mm. and then it just went crazy. I had like, I'm just bait DMing me saying, oh, can we post this on our Instagram page? At that, bear in mind at that point, I didn't know what going viral was. I didn't know what <laughs> social media was. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. what blog pages were. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, like, yeah, yeah cool. Let's like, say no more. I had like 99 followers on my Instagram. And then after all my, like my free stuff started circulating everywhere from all the like blogs from I'm just bait, the street blogs from every, every single blog page posting at this point. I'm just getting followers, hundreds, hundreds, tons of thousands, thousands, thousands. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? I'm getting anxiety. I'm having panic attacks. I'm saying to my, like my ex or my whatever. We'll go back to that. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Go on. laughs> what was I saying? You said that your um, it went viral. Yeah, no, it went viral. And then you did. You was getting but anxiety. Then, you had yeah, anxiety. Yeah. yeah. No, I was having panic attacks, and yeah. I was saying like, why are all these people following me? Like, mm -hmm. where are they coming from? And then, yeah, I had to just kind of like learn everything on the job. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would have done things differently if I understood what was going on in my life at that time, but I just kind of like rid the wave. And then all the opportunities just come from there, really, like meeting my manager, meeting all the people that I met along the way, and you know, I've ended up here. Do you find like when um, you go viral, then there's mm -hmm. this pressure to, to kind of go viral again, because you've, it, yeah. you've, it, you've tasted that feeling of everyone sharing you, everyone saying your name, everyone being like, oh, what's happening now? Do yeah. you, when you release songs, is there the underlying pressure of, is this going to go viral again? No, because I experienced that and I appreciated that having that yeah. initially, because that's what like, kind of like put me on to then now focus on music. After going viral, that's when I started to realize, okay, cool, now I'm going to focus on music mm. hard. But now going viral is not everything for me because of what I want to do in my career. I want to, I want to have, like, I want to build a legacy. Like right. I'm here for the long run. For me, what's important is longevity, not really going viral and having, you know, that one moment where, yeah, everybody's talking about you and then, you know, you just start to go yeah, downhill. Coming, I'm yeah. really trying to pre the game. So mm -hmm. if it takes me longer because I'm, like, as I said, I'm learning on the job. I've only been rapping for a year and a half and I just kind of fell into it. So if that's, if that means I've got to go another year or however long, just really making sure that I'm solidifying my future yeah. in this industry, I'm ready to do that. I'm not really fussed on the, the viral shit. I was um, listening to some of your stuff and I feel like your tonality is very like Foxy Brown. You know, like oh, that, you. <laughs> like that. Um, Cause I was listening to Foxy Brown the other day and I was like, mm -hmm. I just like her tonality cause it's got that kind of uh, harsh tone. It's, you know what I mean? And it, mm -hmm. it kind of pierces through you, but not in a, in a masculine but feminine way at the same time. So she mm -hmm. still sounds quite sexy. But I feel like you've got quite <laughs> a sexy like tonality about you. Um, who do you kind of, like who's your, 
you said little Kim, but do you mm. look to like the, the the Foxy brands and who over here um, do you mm, okay. kind of? Um, um, so yeah, Lil Kim, I'd say Nikki's like one of my biggest inspirations. But then in the UK, um, to so before I started rapping, it was um, I don't know if you know like Roxanne, Baby Blue, Lady okay. Alicia, right, Lioness. Yeah. They're kind of like generation. Yeah. Um, that was who kind of like inspired me to start like penning when I was about thirteen or something. But then when I was in jail and decided, okay, cool, I'm going to get out and start rapping, it was actually Steph London. And okay. I, heard, I think I heard her on the radio for the first time. And then I, uh, we had full music and we were now able to watch like TV, like music uh, videos. And then I saw, I can't remember what song it was. And I thought, wow, this is what's going on in the UK scene right now. And this is like, like I love writing music. Like I've got a song coming out called Juice now and I'm now able to kind of like go into the sounds that I want to make. Like mm -hmm. I love songwriting. So then, and I love rapping as well. It was, I just, she was kind of like the first female rapper I've seen. And obviously she's broken so many boundaries. She's done things that people haven't done. Mm. She's, she's obviously hit her records. Like she, she was, she just stood out. So I just thought, okay, cool. If this is what's going on out there, I can, I can, like, I can definitely jump into the scene. Do you know what I mean? So let me focus more on my pen and let me start doing what I'm doing. So as an inspiration, Steph, I'd say was an inspiration. Um, well, Miss Banks. What do you think about the, um, I saw you, the uh, podcast bouncer and Esther's podcast when you're saying like everyone's kind of the women are beefing at the moment. It'll be yeah. nice if everyone comes together. But in my head, I just think sometimes this is going to sound really messy, but I think it's almost healthy that there's this kind of like competitiveness going on mm -hmm. between the, uh, all the rappers, the, the lady rappers out there right now. I mean, can you yeah. tell I'm really trying not to say female, but it's really hard. Like who came up with this thing that you're not allowed to say female rappers? Anyway, do you not think it's like healthy for everyone to kind of you know um go, not go yeah go against each other as long as it's respectful because the men do it men always do it like yeah. they always have a little clash no, and I don't whatever think so no i feel like yeah the men have a clash but the men know how to clash and keep it as in music and they know that okay cool it's lighthearted. whoever loses like it's whoever whoever the people say has lost they've lost and whoever's won is won like the men can really just keep it music females i feel like what's inside is a bit different it's a bit it's led by something else and that's what makes that's what creates the animosity that's what creates the bad atmosphere and it doesn't i don't think it needs to be had like in america that's not what's going on right now like cardi used her like light to then shed light on the other female rappers and the mm. whack video she put a bunch of female rappers in there from mulatto to ruby rose to suki then she's featured with meg when she didn't have to do that but then create that whole female empowerment thing and there's dream doll and there's so many of them that just support each other they're constantly under each other's page they're constantly liking each other's photos posting each other's music and all they've done is create a stronger female a female why, black side why of do the you industry. think we don't do that over here it's too much competition like, I f not even too much competition. Everybody feels like they're in competition. Everybody feels like they're in competition, right, okay. if that makes sense. But um, I feel like that's also because the UK are still a bit behind in terms of... So America's had, obviously, Lil' Kim have her 10 years, Nicki have her 10 years, Cardi now having her time, and now they're ready to appreciate more than one female rapper. They've kind of, like, had their female rappers and they've digested that whole thing. We haven't had many who have mm. had their time. We've yeah, only okay. really had Steph and then, like, Miss Banks has also, like, had her, like, kind of shine. And we're still, we're still kind of new in this whole female rap thing and I feel like people are still feeling like there's only one spot. We haven't been open to having multiple people, like, in the limelight yet. That hasn't happened yet. Do you, as a person that is actually a lyricist, do you get annoyed with, like, the, um, the Renes? The amount of girls that just want to make music because just, they feel yeah, like yeah. they can? Yeah, I do. I feel like it's very disrespectful to the craft. And <laughs> I really do. It annoys me that everybody who has a platform will get some sort of clout or some sort of attention off one incident that might be happening and then tries to monetize off that by making a song because I've loved music for my whole life. And then, But obviously, it, it's not like it's an issue because mm. I don't... That it's not like I care, but it just, it takes away what music should be. And while you're making bullshit music, that's what people are taking in. That's what the Shea Bros are taking in. And people are saying, oh, female rappers are shit. And, oh, female, female shouldn't rap. And this is what we mean. Like, bring back the males or do this and that. And it's because you are, you're, you're taking the shine away from what's mm -hmm. re, what should be really being looked at. And mm -hmm. I think that's what the disrespectful part of it. And then you have these girls say, I don't really want to rap anyway. I'm not really a rapper. I'm just doing it for fun then don't then because no one's doing YouTube videos for fun or no one's doing this for fun it's just kind of like I feel like because of the way so, like social media is now it's just allowed people to do that so it's obviously I can't complain about it but it just means yeah that's just what's going on right now <laughs> so um going back to your image and your mm -hmm. tweets um something that I saw which I agreed with mm -hmm. um was you talking about 
skinny and slim shaming. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, well, I, well, I still, I am quite slim still. I've got a bit of a gut now. That just happens <laughs> as you get older and you don't go to the gym um, and you just sit on your ass all day eating. Lockdown, blame it on lockdown, but it was there lockdown. before lockdown. Um, <laughs> So, but I understand because I put something out similar maybe last year saying that, especially within the black community, when you're slim, mm. we probably get more shamed, I think, sometimes than maybe somebody that is classed overweight. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, like an overweight woman could be, be deemed more desirable than a woman that is really, that is slim. Mm-hmm. Um, how has that been for you in like an industry where you know, every woman, like the, the ladies that you've mentioned, they've all very voluptuous, full-figured women. Mm-hmm. Do you, how has that been for you and your, like, your self-esteem and just putting music out? Are you self-conscious of it? Um, no, I wouldn't say self-conscious because I don't really allow the, like, negativity to, to overwhelm me. Mm. But um, I definitely was shocked because I've never... I, I, I feel like, of course, I've experienced skinny shaming throughout my life, but yeah. I, I've never had it so, like, much until I put myself on the internet. So mm. I was just kind of shocked that people, like, were that bothered by it. And it's so, like, vocal, like vocalised and it's so, like, normal. That's what kind of, like, surprised me. But it's not because, it, like, it affects me. I feel like it's because people, like, make them comments with an intent of breaking you down and mm. kind of expect every female rapper who then eventually gets somewhere to get the BBL done and to, to make the alterations. And I don't want to... Why? Why do you expect me to do that and fold? And why does that have to be the pattern? Because you're telling me I'm too skinny. Like, what does that even mean? That have, do you feel like it's affected um, you any, in any way, like, when it comes to people buying into you as an artist? Because mm. at the moment, that's what's popping now. Mm-hmm. So do you feel... That's yeah, it, it, it has. Um, I've definitely like had my moments where I felt like, okay, cool. Is is that the look I have to have to to just be part of what's going on right now? Because obviously, you see, it's a, it's it's every, it's not just the UK. It's America as well. All the American females yeah. have BBLs and they have mm-hmm. them bodies done. Not from not just rappers, the influencers. Like that's just what it is right now. And then the UK girls are trying to copy that, and it's just kind of like. All right, cool. Would I just be the one man standing, thinking I'm gonna create this whole kind of fight of yeah, slim girls like rule we'll and do it together. Slim people girls are just. Together. We'll do it, but do I it. don't know. Sometimes <laughs> it feels like, and maybe you just be defeated in the end because everyone is still just gonna continue to tell you you're too skinny and you're still gonna continue to be skin ashamed. But then on the other hand, I can't. I don't. Let, I can't let it. Yeah, like sometimes I, I agree with you there. Sometimes even me, like. Um, I don't think I've had I've actually had guys say to me I'll pay for you to have a BBL like I'll do we, like oh Z if you just like got your body done you'll be you'll be like da, da. Mm-hmm. and I'm just like is this supposed to be a compliment like am I supposed to like listen to this and yeah. be happy that you're telling me only if I had maybe a bigger bum or mm-hmm. wider hips or whatever then I would be a better baddie or whatever you, however yeah. you want to put it and um, I sometimes I do think oh sometimes I Oh, I might just fuck off to Turkey and just get my body done. <laughs> but then on the other hand, as my following's grown, mm-hmm. and when I put out that tweet um, saying about slim women, mm-hmm. the amount of women that DM'd me or was underneath my comments mm-hmm. saying, oh my gosh, me too, especially, yeah. you know, Caribbean household, African household, like yeah. they'll ask you if you've eaten yeah. or all these things. It makes me then think, actually, I'm not going to do it because there's loads of other slim women out there that, Maybe, I, I maybe look to maybe you or yeah. me or other girls that are in, the, in this world That's where people look up well. to and think, actually, because you look like that, it's okay. Because mm-hmm. she looks like this, okay, I don't need to go get my body done. And I see, I saw even the other day, another woman went to Turkey, got her body done, and she passed away, and she's got that three kids. And I'm like, this is pressure from social media. Mm-hmm. This is because this is what we've been told now is what is in fashion. Yep. And um, I just think it's quite sad. I, I think, think it's, it's sad too. I think it's very sad that people feel like that's what's normal now. Like, that procedure is crazy. The whole BBL procedure to me looks absolutely wild, and I don't know why I would put my, voluntarily put myself through that pain. Mm. I wouldn't. It's not... Like, I've learned to love my body a lot more, like, recently, I'd say in the last year. Mm. Uh, before that, initially, it, it was kind of, I was very, like I said, I was a bit taken back by it and kind of thinking, oh, is this really what it has to be? But over the last year, I've kind of... Yeah, I've learned to like love myself and I'm completely like kind of happy. But after I kind of put all of that stuff out on social media and all the skinny shaming stuff, it's the same with me. A lot of girls shouted at me. I had so many in my DMs, hundreds and hundreds of girls sharing their stories. And like, it just made me realize, okay, cool. There's actually girls watching me now and yeah, yeah, they're supporting yeah. me yeah, on this yeah, movement. Yeah. Like, and if I now decide to fold and then get a BBL done, what kind of example is that going to set to them? What's that going to make them feel like? Like, okay, cool. 
she started this whole thing and then she just went and changed it. Like, yeah. yeah. So um, you let it slip that you have ex-boyfriend. So what's the love life like? What's happening um, now? I said ex-boyfriend, he's not really ex. Oh, he's there still. Yeah. Can't let him go, can you? Oh, those ones there. You've all been there, girl. Trust me. You're just thinking. <laughs> it's complicated, but... Oh, no. I hope he doesn't watch this and be like, what, so I'm your ex, yeah? Swear, is that what we're doing now? Yeah, I'm your ex. I would say we'll take it out, but we won't. So just pre-warn him that you refer See, to him. He's sat right in the room. Oh, sorry, shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to whoever it is over there. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's awkward, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Well, he's here, but you're just going to have to speak about it anyway. How <laughs> has it been in a relationship when you're kind of... Men are going to be looking at you in a desirable way. They're going to, mm -hmm. like, guide, like you said before, men in the industry are in your DMs and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How's it been being in a relationship while um, you're... While your career is taking off, I think okay, cool. So like I was in this relationship when I first come into the industry, so it's kind of like I was very like vocal about it, very public, and it, it was kind of I feel like because it was so like out there, I wasn't really moved to, and kind of people kind of like respected that energy. Okay. But then we've had obviously our issues, so we kind of split up for a little while, and then during that time where I was single now, and obviously now it's ev all the photos have been taken down, and it's evident now that she's single, that's when I kind of like saw the energy like change, oh, wow. but I feel like, I don't know, in terms of the actual relationship, now coming into music, it definitely puts strain on, like, strain on the relationship, right, because right, right. you like, don't forget this someone that knew me before La Vida Loca. He was sat with me creating a name, like right, okay. before before even like my first song or whatever. Like so then to see now the whole journey, the whole progression now, stylist and makeup artist now and now she's looking like this now and then now like, there's well, male rappers now this. and this What? Swear you never do you never used to look like this for me. <laughs> <laughs> but like obviously like there's just been a long journey and of course it's it's a change of life. Like it's someone experiencing my change of life with me and yeah, it can, it's definitely, it's been a journey. But, I don't know, you have to, depending on how much you love that relationship and love that person, it's my job to make it all work, in a sense. So, um, what, what can we expect next? Um, what, in terms of music? Yeah, music, yeah. Um, I'm not with you and your boyfriend, like. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, <laughs> no um, what have we got next? Okay, cool, so I've got um, a song called Little Beauties Matter dropping... Hey, on Friday. You, yeah. What, you didn't call me up so I could twerk in the video now? No, I was supposed to do a video shoot on Sunday, but I had um, Corona. Manager, hello? I had Corona. Uh, corona got me. How long did you say you had Corona ago? Um, about two weeks ago. Oh, we hope so. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Even Dave started crying. Dave was like, mm -mm, No, no, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay. I've, I've done my isolation now, but... Um, how was it? Was it... Was it it really stressed me out because I had a video shoot oh, and I right. hate things not going to, like, I hate when things fall through, like, I hate it, it really annoys me, like really, you know, like when you feel like you've got a chip on your shoulder, right, 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 so that right. annoyed me throughout my whole quarantine, that like, the video shoot had to be cancelled, but then I spent the whole of it just writing a lot of music, so okay. then now I'm excited to go to the studio. So you brought out EP mm -hmm. last year, Yeah. so then my first what, project. And, ha and that was, how did people receive it, did you, were you um, happy with good. it? Yeah. yeah, no, I'm proud, I'm nearly on a million streams on my first project and this was only like, like it's, I haven't even, it hasn't, has it been out a year now? No, it hasn't even been out a year yet. That's so yeah, really no, I'm, I'm proud, I'm very happy. So with what would be next, an album or would you? Um, no, another EP. I, what's the difference between an EP and album? I asked um, someone this the other day and they didn't know and this was a an musician. EP me, stands for Extended Plays, Okay. Right? Uh, okay, cool. Um, that's only about six, that's about five, six, seven-ish songs. Okay. An album is 22, so about 20, 20 to 22 songs. Okay. Which is, I feel like that's the biggest project that an artist would make, no? Is it? I, I thought was like 22. 22. Wow, that's a lot of songs, boy. 20, I thought an album was 20 songs. Oh, from anything from 10 songs up. Okay, cool. But it's like a main body of work now, an album. I wouldn't do an okay. album yet. You wouldn't? No. Okay. It's too early. So you're going to do another EP, yeah. and you've got a song coming called, coming called Little Booties. Matter, yeah. Matter, Little Booties. And then I've got another song called, coming next Friday called Juice. Okay, and what's yeah. that? About Pum Pum Juice or something? No, it's about the juice I got, baby. Okay. <laughs> I, I just thought, because WAP every really like, you know what I mean? <laughs> no. Have you got any questions for me? Um, I actually do, you know. Oh, go on then. No, like, okay, cool. 
<laughs> go on. You don't? No. Oh, you th- oh, I thought you had a question. I was no, because... Like... It, I, do you know what? No, no go on. You have, but you don't want to ask it. Go on, just go. I've, I mean, I've asked you loads of intrusive questions. So you, I feel like you have got one, but you don't want to ask okay, it. Okay, do you have a boyfriend? I don't have a boyfriend. Why? I, I, do you know what? I think... I think my platform is off-putting to men. If I've been honest, understand. if I've been honest with you, so yeah, no, it's a bit. It's, yeah, it's a bit in the face, <laughs> um, and I, they, no one knows what I'm ever gonna say. Mm-hmm. I think also men think like I will come on my show and drag them, mm-hmm. but I have been in a relationship while I've had my show, and people might not necessarily know that I might refer to him, but I'll never like divulge into like my business well, yeah. and I was thinking this the other day like people think this but I've never been on the blog sites for anyone that I'm dating mm-hmm. or anyone so that I've really do, like you keep your life private so you do you would have a man there but we just would never know that no I would I would say whether I put him up is a different thing because okay. I think that it's a lot of pressure for whoever that person would be unless mm-hmm. they was in the limelight do you yeah. get what I mean but if it's a, a quote-unquote normal person mm-hmm. I think that's a lot of pressure for them to now people mm-hmm. know who they are mm-hmm. start follow- I don't do you get what I mean yeah. so I kind of keep that but I, I just don't have anyone anyway to put up anyway mm-hmm. uh but yeah i have my fun and, and i enjoy myself okay do you know what i mean so uh, <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm always talking about you know my 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 sexual endeavors that i have here and there okay. so yeah i just i just think it's really off-putting so did you see what i was saying on um i was saying the other day about um i, I don't know if you've experienced this when you are a woman with your own platform, do you feel like you have experienced clout chasing men? Yeah, recently now I have, yeah. You have? As, as my platform's got bigger and people start, have started to respect it, because when I first came out, no, I don't, people just thought I was a chatty patty mm-hmm. and whatever, kind of like when they were saying you're a clout chaser, like yeah. I've had all of that, I still get that. Yeah. So I think men stayed away from me, but as they've seen it grow and they, they see that the, the scene and the industry has started to kind of respect me yeah. and whatever mm-hmm. and, and my show, then I st- I've started to get more guys be like, yeah, what's easy? Like, <laughs> da, 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 like yeah, it's it. Da, 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 da. Even like I've seen like one time I made you think posted me and someone was like, oh, there's something about ZZ. She's looking nice. There's something different yeah. about her. And then someone was like, yeah, it's because she's, it's like she's become more successful. And I just thought, you fucking little yeah. shit bags. Like, what's that about? But it is what it is. But I just feel like the UK fuck with you, like, Fuck with what is popular to fuck with. 100%. When you're the most hated, you are the most hated. But when people start to see it's, it's, it's popular to like starts, you, yeah. everyone starts liking you, yeah. That's how it goes. It's a popularity contest. Definitely. So <laughs> tell the people where to find you. Um, at King Levida Loca on Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, Levida Loca, Snapchat, The Life of Loca. The Life of Loca. Congratulations yeah. on your billboard, I saw. <laughs> oh, Hot thank you. for 2021. Hot for 2021. And now my face on a billboard. Can you imagine? Get it, man. Get Can't it. believe it. It's good. <laughs> that's, how, how, that's how it should be. Yeah. Anyway, guys, you know mm. what to do. Like, subscribe, tell your friend, tell your mum, tell your dad, tell your cat, tell your dog. Um, yeah, we out. Get, get. <laughs>